We are talking about the forever three, faith, hope, and love. The most wonderful three things that we have in our spiritual life. It's from 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. Currently, I'm focusing on faith. And I want to speak today specifically about faith that forms or shapes. It's a wonderful discovery once you learn that your faith in God can really shape your world. Faith in God forms life around us. That's exciting. Now, God shaped the world through His words of faith. It literally says, the worlds were formed by the word of God. Um, that is in Hebrews 11. But we know from the account of the creation that God spoke everything that we see around us into being. It's wonderful. Imagine the power behind God's words. And he believed that as he spoke, things would happen. And they did. So the privilege of faith, in a sense, is to shape the world around us through our faith in God. Plainly put, your faith expressed through your faithful words and prayers can shape your world and change your circumstances. Now, not all Christians believe that. But I would like to encourage you to follow after God's example that He shaped this world through His words and His faith. That's what Hebrews 11 says. By faith, we understand that the worlds were formed by the Word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Wow! Please read that for yourself again, Hebrews 11 verse 3. So I want to bring your focus to this. There's a holy alliance between faith in God and the words we speak, especially words we use in prayer. And we see this unfold as Jesus speaks and we read about his words in Mark 11 verse 22 to 24. It goes like this. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. So this is about faith. Then he goes on to say, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Verse 24, Therefore I say to you, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. What a powerful promise. I hope you listened as I laid emphasis to words like prayer and believe. But I want you to note this. The elements working together in this instance is faith, prayer and words. Very important to note that the words say or said is repeated six times in these three verses, making it a crucial part that brings faith and prayer together. And many times I hear as Christians speak that they make their own prayer and faith ineffective by their words. Their words and their prayers don't add up. Their words and their faith don't add up. And it compromises what they believe and what they pray. So we pray, God, do this and help us here, but then we speak doubt or we speak out of our ignorance. My little message today is hopefully there to help you to bring these things in alignment, your faith, your prayers and your words. So let's take care that our words in prayer and in life do not construct the platform for complaints or doubt, but rather let your words and your prayers and your faith build an altar on which you can bring your whole life to God and He can use it to shape your world. Very important. I believe that is what honors God. So yours and my responsibility is to find out what God says in His Word and then for us to speak that and to pray that and live that. that. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13 lays down a very simple rule for the order of things. Paul writes this and he says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, by the way, that's what you and I have as Christians. He says, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I speak. 
And we also believe and therefore speak. That's what Paul wrote. So let's make sure that the word that you and I use daily, the words and our prayers come from a basis of faith in our hearts. Let us believe and then speak. And the two must correspond. The word of faith over your mouth will unlock your godly purpose and your future and shape your world. We see that in Abraham's life in closing. Abraham's name was Abram, of course, short, and then it became Abraham, which means father of many nations when he did not have his own son. So can you imagine every day that there was this Repetition of the words that God had spoken. Your name is Abraham, father of many nations. And people would say, good morning, who are you? Pleased to meet you. And he would say, I am the father of many nations. And he spoke the words that God said. He was fully aligned with God. And you know that that promise of God became reality when a son called Isaac was born to Abraham. But he had to speak that also, not just believe it in his heart. I am Abraham. Where's your children, Abraham? No, I, I, I don't know. No, he kept on just saying, I am Abraham, father of many nations, when he had no son of his own. Amazing. So let us follow in the example of Abraham. So don't waste your faith or your words. Use it to build your future. I want to pray for you. Lord, I pray that you will help each one of us to bring our faith, our prayers and our words in alignment with each other. And that we will really speak from what we believe, our faith in trust in you, that we will speak over our lives and over our circumstances. What you say, not what we feel, what we see or what others say, but what you say. That we will walk by faith pray by faith and live by faith and with that shape our world to your glory and your honor help every one of us to do that in jesus name amen